to Professor Joanna's class at Joanna's University. Today, we will analyze Mary Shelley's Frankenstein through the Taoism lens. Hello, welcome to Professor Joanna's class at Joanna's University again. And today, we are going to analyze Mary Shelley's concept of nature in her famously written book, Frankenstein, through the Taoism lens. So many of you may have already started to wonder, why the Taoism lens? Because many of you guys have probably already know that the philosophy of Tao is a distinct Chinese philosophy. And Mary Shelley is a famous English writer who wrote um, her famous book Frankenstein during the Romantic period and the Industrial Revolution. So these two concepts seems very seems not connected. So how are we going to analyze her book through this distinct Chinese philosophy? So I'm gonna explain you why. So Mary Shelley wrote her book in the 1800s, which is the beginning of the 19th century, which is also the Industrial Revolution in the Great Britain. And in China, the 1800s marks the beginning of the Qing Dynasty. During the Qing Dynasty, a lot of missionaries, um, Christian missionaries, Catholic missionaries from Europe, actually came to China to spread their religion. And they also took the Chinese culture back to their home country as well. So Tao Te Ching, which is the key book in Taoism, is wealthy book that they took back to Europe. And Tao Te Ching is the second, most, second book printed in the most language in the world after the Bible. So you can see that Tao Te Ching actually has a really great influence over the world. And in Europe, Taoism is the most popularly known concept of the Chinese philosophy not Confucianism, not anything else, but Taoism. And actually, there's, here's a really cool example. In Germany, one of every four people actually owns the famous book Tao Te Ching, which has the key elements of the Taoism philosophy. So you can see how the Taoism philosophy really influenced uh, many philosophers, scientists in Europe, as many of them have read the key book of Taoism. So what concept, what Taoism concept are we going to use to analyze Mary Shelley's Frankenstein? Because Taoism is a really big philosophy of China and it incorporates many different social aspects. For example, it teaches us how to be a human, it teaches us how to do things. So what kind of concept are we going to use here? So although that Taoism is a really grand philosophy that incorporates many aspects of our life, all of them derives from its respect towards nature. And nature is the most important concept in Taoism. And in the concept of nature, Taoism values what we called the unity of heaven and human. So just from the literally, it means that human should become one with the nature. However, we can analyze this quote through two different perspectives. And the first perspective that we can analyze is the science perspective. So um, what Taoism is trying to say is that human is just a small part of this grand universe. And um, heaven, um, in Chinese, when it's translated, it means the way. So Taoism believes that there is a way for everything to work in the world. And um, we as human, as this little part of the universe, we can only find the way of how the nature works. And we can embrace the way of how the nature works, but we can never change the way. So this is how we become one as the nature. We can only discover how the law of nature works, but we can never change how the nature uh, works. So um, this is how we can analyze the unity of heaven and human through um, the scientific perspective. But Taoism doesn't stop there. It also has a humanity perspective to analyze this quote. So um, Taoism is saying that human nature, when we were born, 
uh, it is very pure. But um, as we live in a society, we gain influence from other people, from other elements in the world. And our pure human nature is disguised by um, other things in the world such as wealth, desire, love, and other horrible things that we can think of. So um, we lost who we actually are, so we lost um, the most pure part of ourself. And we need to liberate ourselves from those desire and re-embrace our pure humanity. And that's how we can become one part of our nature again. So this is how we will use um, the unity of heaven and human to analyze Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and how it perspective how Mary Shelley think of nature today and we will analyze it through the science perspective and the humanity perspective. So here's my thesis. So my thesis is saying that Frankenstein emphasizes the importance of following the law of nature by demonstrating its principal effect on the development of society and human happiness, which I will prove through my lecture. So as I've said, that there are two ways to analyze the Taoism unity of heaven and human, and the first one is the science perspective. So we'll talk about Frankenstein through the science perspective first. So one key idea to identify here is what ideas does Mary Shelley's Frankenstein contain of nature through the scientific perspective, of course. So the first one is that nature helps human to find peace. And the second one is if we fight against nature, then nature is out to destroy us. And um, these are very two very different perspectives that Mary Shelley is trying to show in um, her book Frankenstein. And now we'll use some quotes to prove her two points. So the first quote is here, by degree, the calm and heavenly scene restored me, and I continue my journey towards Geneva. So in here, we can actually see um, through my last um, PowerPoint, this actually proves how nature helps humans to find peace. So we can see that in Frankenstein, uh, Victor actually, his health, his mentality, his happiness is all deprived by the hard work of creating the monster and then chasing the monster and hunting the monster. But, um, so, but here we can see how Victor regained his uh, peace, peaceful of mind in nature and how his health, although it is deprived through our socially matter, it is restored in nature and it helps him to continue his journey. It helps, it prevents him from getting depressed. It helps him to continue his work and so on. So this is how nature is really important to us. And Mary Shelley here is trying to convey because she wrote the book during the Industrial Revolution. And during the Industrial Revolution, many trees and the nature were destroyed to build factories and for scientific progress. But Mary Shelley is saying that Actually, those science instruments, those scientific progress is what can destroy us and we can only find our peace, our inner peace back in nature. Nature is the one that held human beings together, helping human to restore their mentality, our mental health. So this is why nature is uh, very, very important to all of us. And then here we can see Another quote that proves um, such point, which um, says, He may suffer misery and be overwhelmed by this appointment, yet when he has retired into himself, he will be like a celestial spirit that has a hollow around him. Within those circle, no grief or folly ventures. So this is actually well, uh, this quote actually comes from Walton's first letters that um, he wrote to his sister, and this is a description of Victor again. So after Victor spent all those years creating, hunting the monster, he is very deprived. But when he is um, left on alone, when he was on the boat, he's able to enjoy himself uh, in the um, peaceful surroundings, in the tranquil surroundings. And that is how he is able, that's the only moment that he has 
to restore his mind, to find peace in his inner heart, and that is what prevented him from going crazy in all those all those years. So Mary Shelley is saying that nature is indeed very important to our health, and we should never give up the benefits of having this natural surroundings around us and for the scientific progress. So here, these three quotes actually emphasizes on the second point that I was, uh, that Mary Shelley was trying to prove in the book, which is if we try to change how the nature works, the things that we create will come back and haunt us. So the first quote says, Shall each man, cried he, find a wife for his bosom, and each beast have his mate, and I be alone. So this quote actually comes from the monster who is trying to um, ask Victor why he cannot have a mate. So we can see that um, even a monster, even he is not how, even he's not created as a human being, he is a monster. He follows the human nature of wanting love and wanting a company and wanting a family. So in our human nature, um, we want to create a family because we want to be accompanied by other people. It is our human nature to find a mate. And we can see how this monster, even though he's created as a monster, is trying to find a mate. He Even a monster cannot escape the rule of human nature. He is bond to the human nature forever, which shows how human nature is very important to us. And these two quotes need to be analyzed together. So the first one says, Life and death appeared to me ideal bonds, which I should first break through and pour a torrent of light into the dark world. So this quote is Victor trying to say that he wants to create a monster from the dead. He wants to create a life from the dead. He wants to fight against the law of nature, which is life and death. He is trying to fight against that and bring back a life from the dead. So, um, but we can see how this thing ends, which is, man, you shall repent the injuries you inflict. So we all know that the human being that Victor is trying to create from the dead didn't turn out to be very well. It actually turned out to be a monster who killed Victor's family and haunts Victor and, and leads to the final down downfall of both Victor and the monster. So we can see that even Victor succeed in turning against the law of nature, the life and dead, he really did use his scientific knowledge to bring back a monster from the dead, he cannot escape the law of nature which the monster kept hunting on him forever and led to his downfall. So the second key question that we need to identify here is how may um, the ideas that I just explained be valued intellectually and morally? So the first thing that we can say is Mary Shelley's connection to the Industrial Revolution. So Mary Shelley lives during the peak of Industrial Revolution where there's a lot of scientific progress and during that time, uh, Britain actually suffered from a lot of pollution. There's um, excrees on the street everywhere, There's uh, it's really bad, bad smelling everywhere and people are really not living a really happy life because everywhere is dirty and all of the beautiful nature trees, the grass, the plants are all cut down, all the natural resources are deprived just for scientific progress. So we can see how uh, Mary Shelley is saying that such rapid development goes against how the law of nature should work and it leads to all the social problems that I just have said and um, this caused a permanent change to the structure of the society which she does not think is beneficial for the development of human being. So that is uh, one idea that she is trying to convey here. The second idea is that um, she tries to tell people that when we are developing our society, um, there's something more than just science. There's, we need to really consider the ethics behind those 
um, science that we are creating because if those ethics are wrong, if those ethics are against the law of nature, then those signs are not good signs. They will come back and haunt uh, us forever. Just like how the monster really haunted on Victor and led to their downfall. And the third idea that she's trying to convey is that we need to uh, value the law of nature defined, that is defined for us and follow those rules. So Frank, uh, Victor, for example, um, he believes that he has all those scientific knowledge, he's a very smart student, he went to Oxford, he definitely has those knowledge to create a monster. But we need to respect the law of nature even though we know we have the knowledge to do so. So if we um, implement this idea in our current society, which is Cologne for example, um, human now is definitely, we have the knowledge to Cologne human being, we have the knowledge to Cologne animals and plants. But more importantly, we need to see if we, we have to respect the law of nature, which is our personality it is unique and individual and we should not give it up on that so this is um, another thing that she's trying to convey is that even though we have the knowledge we have to be aware of um, how the nature works and not to fight against it we need to respect it and the final idea that she is trying to say is that nature is important to our mental and physical health which um, helps us to develop the society. So as we said, um, Victor, both Victor and the monster, actually um, their mentality is destroyed and deprived in our society. A Victor's health and mentality is deprived from hunting the monsters for all those years and having the burden of knowing that a monster that he created killed almost all his family. And for the monster, even though he tries to engage in the human community, he is abandoned more than one time and he is not accepted. So both of them, um, their mentality is destroyed. But we can see how nature helps to help them together when Victor really tries to sail on the sea when his um, men mental health is deprived and the monster hides in the cave uh, when he is feeling bad. And it is all those natural elements that really bonds them together and stop them from going crazy. So uh, Mary Shelley is saying how nature is very important to our mental health and only when we are mentally healthy we can create, um, we can develop our society, we can progress our scientific development. So um, these are the four key ideas that Mary Shelley is trying to say. So the final thing that we need to um, look at is all the uh, Mary Shelley's ideas and um, how it is connected to the Taoism of Lens. So, um, as I've explained earlier, um, Taoism really values the way, the way that things work. It is what Taoism really values. And we should never change how the way works. We can only discover it and embrace it. So life and death is definitely one of the most important the way of how the nature works because it, it is the key definition of a human because we are given to life and then we die. So that is what makes us, makes our life meaningful. So um, Frankenstein really tries to change how the way, uh, Victor Frankenstein really tries to change how the way works and we can see how that turned out to him. Um, that really haunted him and led to his downfall. And um, the second idea here is that in order to harmonize with the nature, we need to follow the way. So Victor Frankenstein did not follow the way. He tries to create life from the dead and um, he tries to really fight against Mother Nature and Mother Nature actually came back to him and haunt him. And uh, last but not the least, um, Taoism has this idea of doing nothing means doing everything. So if we only um, discover the way and embrace the way and you know not really try to do anything to change the way actually counts as doing a lot of things. It is actually the best um, harmony that human can reach with the nature, which is do nothing with the nature. We just remain in this whole harmony with the nature. So this is a very philosophical idea that that was a is trying to create that until today, Professor Joanna does not even have a full understanding 
but this is what the Taoism is trying to say. But it's very interesting how we can also find connection of this in Mary Shelley's um, idea of nature, which is um, we should not um, be obsessed with changing how the way works and um, we should only find a way and embrace the way. So that is very interesting. So now we are going to analyze Mary Shelley's Frankenstein through the humanity perspective. What ideas does the work really contain? So there are two ideas. Um, the first one is the pursuit of science will not give human happiness, but depression and disappointment. And the second idea is that without the teaching of ethic, Science we create will become monsters that come to haunt us. And now we will prove these ideas through some quotes in Frankenstein. So the first quote here that says, How dangerous is the acquirement of knowledge, and how much happier that man is who believes his native town to be the world than he who aspires to be greater than his nature will allow. So this quote actually comes from um, Victor on the boat and this is one of the quote that key quotes that he told Bolton for the reason of not acquiring knowledge because he clearly knows what his knowledge has given him. His knowledge has made him created a monster. His knowledge made him lost all his family. This scientific progression is what haunted him and destroyed his life. So he is really trying to convey the idea that knowledge sometimes is really not the best thing when you don't know what you are doing with it. It will actually come to haunt us if the science that you are trying to create is beyond the allowance of our nature and it is better even to not have such knowledge when we cannot handle that knowledge. So this really corresponds with the Taoism idea of doing nothing is doing everything, which means um, we can only discover how the nature works and we should never change how the nature works. And the second quote here is, um, but now that I have finished, the beauty of the dream vanished and breath, uh, breathless horror and disguise filled in my heart. So this quote comes from Victor Frankenstein after he created the monster which he believes is his beautiful child. He spent all those years uh, deprived hell, deprived his mentality to create such a beautiful monster. But the moment the monster came to life, he realized what kind of a creation that he have made, how horrible this creation has become and he became horrified. He's not happy after this huge progression because definitely bring something alive back from death is a huge scientific progression. We, we can see here how Victor is really not happy about this and actually he is horrified by what he have created. Um, the third quote is, the more I saw of them, the greater become my desire to claim their protection and kindness. My heart yearned to be known and loved by these amiable creatures. So this quote actually comes from the monster after he is abandoned by Victor. He is really trying to acquire the love from other human beings. He went to the cottagers. Um, he really tried to create a bond with the lazy family and he really tried to gain the compassion. He, did, he learned human knowledge, he read all those books just so he can connect with humanity better. So this actually shows that deep inside our humanity, love is the forever theme. Love is a theme that we try to pursue forever and nobody can escape that. And love is the only thing that can make us happy. It's not science progression, it's not social progression, it's not the development of a new scientific creation. It is love, it is family, it is a bond with other human beings that really makes us happy. And this is our human nature and this is the way of the nature that we can never change. And last but not the least, um, answer me, I conjure you by our mutual happiness with a simple truth. Do you not love another? So this quote actually comes from Elizabeth and in her letter to Victor. He, she really tries to come from Victor because Victor, he is so into the idea of creating a monster for all those years that he really didn't care about his family. He left his family, he left Elizabeth, he didn't care about his friends, and he didn't even care about his health. So. Um, 
he didn't really care about anybody. So Elizabeth here is trying to say that do you really love another person, Victor? Or you are just so selfish. The only person you love is yourself. And because of this, we can see the selfish Victor actually, be because of the reason that he doesn't love anybody else, it contributes to his downfall because in our human nature, the way of nature is that we need to love other people. We need to have the love from others as well. This is how our nature works. And Victor tries to go against that nature and this leads to his downfall. So um, the question here is, how may they be valued intellectually and morally? So the first idea is that we forget what is most important to us, such as happiness. Um, and such happiness does not come from science, it comes from the nature, it comes from human nature of family and friends. And this is what the Taoism is trying to convey, is that our humanity, when we were born, is really pure, but as we move into the society, it's disguised by wealth, by progression, by other things. And we really need to liberate ourselves from that and really find what is important to us, is family, friends, and love. And the second idea here Mary Shelley is trying to say is that without our human feelings, the science that we create has no spirit and will only cause harm. So Victor, he really doesn't love anyone. He does not even have a soul because human soul, the key is love, the caring for other human. This is the key of our soul and he does not have it. So the monster, the creation that he created will definitely be a soulless monster. And the third um, idea is that no matter what technology we create, it will not escape the law of nature. So as we can see, the monster, even though he is a monster, he's abandoned by Victor, he is uh, a scientific creation, he cannot escape the law of nature, which is love. He is trying so hard to get love, and when he didn't get that, he became crazy and started haunting other human beings. Um, so we can see how important love is um, to our daily life. Um, the fourth idea is that um, we have a natural instinct to pursue happiness. So um, we have to embrace that and in order to pursue happiness, the only way is to um, have families, have friends around. It is not social progression, it is not scientific technology. So um, lastly, we will look at its connection to Taoism. So the first one is that we should not be disguised by our the superficial elements like wealth, but liberate ourselves to find a true happiness in the nature, which I have already explained in the last slide. And the second one is technology can only bring us sadness that leads to our downfall. So we can see that if we don't have a spirit like Victor, if we don't have a soul, the technology, the scientific progression, cannot bring us happiness but can only bring us harm and Victor, he, his family all died from this and he eventually died from this as well. And the last but not the least, it is um, the Taoism's uh, concept of the way again. Um, we need to follow the way of family, friends and love otherwise will contribute to our downfall because in our human nature, our way human's way is to always have love around us and always have bonding with other human. This is how we function. We do not function because of scientific technology. We function because of other human, of the friendship, the family members, of the love that we have. This is how we function and if we fight against that way, um, it will bring us harm and not bring us good. So um, finally the conclusion here is that Mary Shelley conveys the importance of nature in our society and warns us the potential harm of technology by portraying the horrific downfall of Frankenstein and the monster. So yeah everybody, um, after seeing this uh, PowerPoint and listening to this lecture, I hope that um, all of you have a better understanding of what Mary Shelley is trying to say about nature in her famously written book Frankenstein through both the scientific lens and um, the humanity lens. And the most important takeaway is that um, technology progression will not bring us good if we do not follow the way of nature. And we should always respect the nature's law and follow the human's law. Thank you.